Hey book fans, I'm Eric from Lonesome Reader. This is the first part of my June reading wrap-up. How are you all doing? It's getting very warm and sunny here in London, so uh, there's lots of people going out in the parks. I don't know how you feel, uh, but I never like reading in the park that much. It's sort of dirty and there's flies and ants and I get really sweaty in the sun, so I much prefer just staying inside and where it's uh, cool and dark and I can just have a light on and enjoy reading there. Uh, but what do you think? Do you like reading in the park? So it's been a busy couple of weeks and I seem to have gotten into a habit in these videos of um, talking about the other like bookish things that I've been doing in London, going to like readings and things like that. But let me know, do you think uh, this is interesting? Should I keep doing this or should I just talk about the books that I've been reading? I don't want to be cluttering my videos talking about these other things if you'd prefer uh, me just to be talking about the books that I've been reading. But London does have a lot of uh, exciting literary events so it's kind of fun to talk about them and share them with you. The first one I went to at the beginning of June was a reading at Gay's The Word Bookstore, which was a sort of celebration because of uh, this book has been recently republished by Serpent's Tale as a classic novel. It's Ready to Catch Him Should He Fall by Neil Bartlett. This is a novel that I haven't actually read. It was first published in the 80s, I think. I've read Neil Bartlett's more recent novels, Skin Lane and The Disappearance Boy. Uh, both of those are really great, strong novels. He's an amazing writer and he's a dramatist, uh, so it's always really great to see him read because he gives really powerful dramatic readings. And this novel is a love story between a young man and an older man who fall in love and decide to get married. And when this was written, obviously it was a time when gay marriage wasn't legal, so it was making sort of a different statement. But now, obviously, it has an entirely different meaning because gay marriage is legal in the UK. So it was interesting hearing him talk about these contrasting time periods. And I'm looking forward to reading this earlier novel of his. And I also, in the past couple of weeks, went to a few different events about the Bailey's Prize because the Bailey's Prize was finally announced. Uh, so I went to the readings um, of the shortlisted authors and all of the shortlisted authors were there except for C.E. Morgan who had just given birth like three or four days before the readings took place uh, so she was back in America but all the other authors were there and it was really fascinating to hear them talk about their books in more detail. Then the next day I got to go to a special morning event where some of the shortlisted authors were there and we could go and talk to them and I got to go and meet Madeleine Tien, whose novel Do Not Say We Have Nothing I loved so much, uh, so I was so like nervous and excited to meet her. And this is total like geeky fanboy probably just talking, but uh, I felt like that there was like a connection between us, like there was just this like instant lovely rapport where we were talking about books and literature and the importance of that and the impact it has on our lives. And uh, so I, I was probably just like gushing at her and she was probably a bit scared, but she seemed really responsive and happy to see me um, and I was totally like flattered she did like know who I was and like thanked me for all the support I've been giving for her novel. So that was such a lovely special meeting. I was there flying the flag for Team Thien. I wish the YouTuber uh, Jason Purcell from Canada was there because he's a big Madeline Thien fan as well and we're just such fanboys for her writing. And then the next evening I got to go to the actual Bailey's Prize party uh, where the announcement of the winner happened and uh, it was Naomi Alderman's The Power, uh, just like Anna, James, and I predicted. Not being smug at all, but yes, we did predict that uh, this would win, or Madeline Thien's book. I'm sure it was very close for the judges between these two novels. This is such a well-deserved winner. It's a powerful, relevant novel. She gave a great speech after she won, so you can see the announcement of the winner and her speech right here. That the winner of the 2017 Bailey's Winners Prize for Fiction is The Power by <laughs> for my life and that what I wanted to do with this book was to be part of that amazing conversation 
about what women can do and achieve and be. And I think we're only just beginning. And it is <laughs> um, it's, it's an incredibly exciting thing to be part of. And everybody should go and see Wonder Woman. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I cried all the way through that movie. Um, I've, I've thought a lot about what, what the women's movement has meant to me over my life. Um, and I've come to the conclusion that it is more vital to me than any other utility that might come into my house. It, I, my life would be more possible with the women's movement existing and no running water than the other way around. Um, and it's just incredible. I mean, I, I, I won. Bloody hell. <laughs> After the winner was announced, uh, it was a really fun party, so got to have some drinks uh, with Anna James and my friend Uli, and mingle with lots of authors and publishers. I avoided meeting Gwendolyn Riley because I didn't really want to meet her, but I did get to meet and chat with Aobami Adebayu, uh, whose novel Stay With Me I really loved as well. Honestly, it would have been really exciting to see this novel win as well, but of course there could only be one winner. I also got to chat with other booktubers like Jen Campbell and Laura. So yeah, it was an all-around lovely, fun evening with lots of people who were passionate about great books written by women. So I felt very lucky to have been able to go to that. And finally, the last bookish activity that I'm going to talk about before talking about what I've actually been reading is uh, I got to have dinner with the author Greg Johnson, who's a southern writer from America, and he's over in the UK just like visiting. So we got to have dinner and chat. He's a good friend of mine and a really kind man. He's written some really excellent fiction, short stories and novels. I'd particularly recommend this book called Women I've Known, which is a whole collection of stories, but there's a section where he writes short stories about different famous female authors' lives, like uh, Sylvia Plath and Willa Cather and Virginia Woolf. So it's a really great beautiful collection. But Greg Johnson is also Joyce Carol Oates's biographer, who you might remember is my favorite author. His biography of her Invisible Writer is so good. It gives such a fascinating insight into Joyce Carol Oates's development as a writer and an educator and a lot of the famous authors she's met and had interactions with and the writing of a lot of her most famous and important works. So I'd also highly, highly recommend that biography. It's also a really interesting way to get a feel for the writing of Joyce Carol Oates and where you might like to start if uh, you haven't read much of her writing. But anyway, it's always really great chatting with uh, Greg Johnson because we're obviously both really huge Joyce Carol Oates geeks, uh, so we can talk a lot about her writing. And that leads on very nicely to the first book that I read in June, which is Joyce Carol Oates's new book of short stories called Dismember. These are stories of mystery and suspense and really get that sort of like psychological reality thriller type feel where you're sort of slightly on the edge because uh, things are slightly off and creepy and you have to piece together a bit what's going on. There's a story of a university student who's sort of haunted by uh, this a uh, schoolgirl that was found in a water container and she's trying to piece together the mystery of what happened to her. There's the story of a widow who moves to a new house and missing her husband. She keeps going back and lingering outside of her old house and uh, finally is allowed back into the old house by the new owners and uh, something quite like creepy happens there. There's a lot in these stories about sort of blurred senses of identity and people who have a slightly disjointed sense of reality but also slight breakdowns in society which leads to people being unfairly oppressed. There's one story in it which is quite stylistically different from the others called Welcome to Friendly Skies which is a monologue on an airplane in this very formal language basically preparing the passengers for death. So if you like stories with a darker edge and a lot of psychological tension I'd really recommend this book of short stories. Next I read White Tears by Harry Kunzru, who's an author that's probably most famous for publishing uh, the novel The Impressionist, uh, which I actually hadn't read any of his work before except for a short story. Um, so this is the first book of his I've read. It's published by Hamish Hamilton. It's the story of two young white men who develop a real passion 
for blues music and jazz, and they become quite avid collectors of uh, this musical form and start mixing the music and making their own music and setting up a music production company, which they become quite successful at. And they uncovered this old blues song, which haunts them in a really strange way and starts to intrude into their sense of reality and it starts really messing with their lives. It's a bit like difficult to explain but the novel basically moves from this very like realist mode into a bit of surreal storytelling where the identity of the narrator becomes mixed with this old blues singer. It's a really fascinating take on race and privilege and this musical uh, tradition of blues songs. So I really enjoyed this novel and the weird places it went to. I next read The Shifting Pools by Zoe Duncan. This is a debut novel published by Lightning Books and I felt such a strong emotional connection to this novel. It's one of those books that just like really hit home with me and it also has a really uh, different like quite daring structure I think where there's the story of a girl who's growing up in the Middle East but then a very traumatic a uh, cataclysmic event happens to her and her family. She moves to England where she grows up and finds a life for herself but she's quite emotionally damaged by the horrible experiences that she's lived through and she starts to shift into this alternative reality, this sort of fantasy world which sounds kind of cheesy but it's done in this really emotionally effective way and she intersperses the narrative also with these dream sequences, uh, which is also a very like tricky thing for an author to do because it can quite like superficially show the the, uh, the problems that the narrator is going through. But in this novel it's done really effectively. I think it shows this sort of low thrumming uh, sense of panic that the narrator feels throughout her life. And then there are also passages which uh, quote from poetry and books of non-fiction and psychology and all of these different elements cohere together to tell this woman's story of this character named Eve uh, who's trying to learn how to live her life uh, while also acknowledging this past and the horrible events that have happened to her. It's an absolutely beautiful novel and I just think it captures so wonderfully this problem that like I've been thinking about for a long time of how do you emotionally deal with this um, sense of trauma in the past if um, horrible things have happened to you where your reality is slightly skewed when everything in your everyday life is sort of colored by these events because it really affects how you emotionally react to things and how you reconcile this inner reality um, with the external world. Zoe Duncan captures this sense really powerfully uh, so I think it's a very strong debut novel that I'd really highly recommend that you look out for, The Shifting Pools. And finally I finished reading this poetry collection called Stranger Baby by Emily Berry and I don't know if it's just because I'm making these connections because I read both of these books right after each other but it felt like they really did connect with each other uh, like Emily Berry in a lot of these poems are talking about the experience of missing her mother and dealing with that grief and how because the mother isn't there it's really just her having this sort of dialogue with this empty presence um, that she still strongly feels in her life. So I don't read a huge amount of poetry uh, so I always feel slightly like nervous talking about it because I don't really know how to dissect it like a narrative in a novel and it's part of a challenge for me because I read so many novels that I'm constantly trying to find a narrative in poetry rather than just letting the language wash over me. So I really tried to just surrender myself to it uh, but I found some of the imagery so like striking and powerful. If you want to listen to a much more articulate review uh, you can listen to Jen Campbell talking about it. She made a whole video specifically about this book so I'll link to that below. There's a lot in these poems about psychology psychology, um, there's a whole series of poems that are like related to Freud and there's also a lot of like water imagery and sort of reflections where the narrator or the voice or the eye of these poems is confronting themselves. And there's also a lot in it about language and the process of writing and how emotions are 
translated into language. So I really enjoyed taking my time with this poetry and uh, letting it sink in. So that's what I've been reading and doing. Let me know if you've read any of these books, uh, what your thoughts are, or if I've compelled you to read any of them, which um, you're really interested in reading now. Let me know all of that in the comments below. If you click show more, I'll post uh, links to my full reviews of these books. I'll chat to you again soon. Thanks for watching and happy reading everyone.